So, it's great to be here. A lot of really exciting projects, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of people looking to build the next uh, unicorn on top of blockchain technology. But I think I'd like to take it back one step, if I may, to ask ourselves, what is blockchain all about? And some of you here may even have been too young to read the original paper, or if not, let me remind you that it all started in 2008 with this landmark paper, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And this was the first time that the um, notion of people being able to interact with electronic cash without a third-party intermediary was proposed. And <clears throat> it brought into effect a number of elements that were needed to let people interact without banks or without this trusted system, which is prone to corruption eventually. And this spawned what we are here today witnessing, the next generation with ideas. But ultimately, we need to be sure that we understand the fundamentals of what a, a blockchain is all about. And essentially, it is this. It is censorship resistance through decentralization. It is the ability to pass transaction from one player to the other without the need for it to be approved or validated by any other controlling factors. And <clears throat> the trouble is that when it first started, everybody were able to mine Bitcoin on their own laptops. But the one Achilles heel of Bitcoin is the fact that we have miners. We have a mining reward. We are paying people to validate blocks. And like all competitions, it ends up in a one-winner scenario, where the biggest player, the one with the highest computing power, the one with the biggest machine, ultimately takes a lot of the prize money. And once we get to that situation, we can no longer trust the people that are meant to be there to um, uh, validate our own transactions. And today, we, instead of banks and without the third-party middlemen, the miners and the stakers become these third-party middlemen. So today, if we take Ethereum, which of course has brought a huge amount of uh, you know, excitement and um, innovation to the space, people are building smart contracts. There's a lot of good that has come out of Ethereum. The one thing to be wary, though, is that 54% of the stake are in the hands of just four entities. And as we've seen recently with the debacle of Tornado Cash, these entities are able to be persuaded to actually censor some of the transactions. But then <clears throat> the Ethereum uh, supporters say, well, Bitcoin is no better. And in fact, that is true. Even though Bitcoin ultimately is the original um, idea of being able to transact without third parties, we see that today 74% of the hash rate are in the hands of just four entities. And you need to ask yourselves, what would it take? If you were to put a gun to the head of the CEO of one of these mining farms, would they be as altruistic as we hope they would be? So why does this happen? Well, <clears throat> the cause of centralization are for a number of reasons. One is, as I mentioned, it's a competition. And therefore, it's much easier with numbers and scale to centralize and become more efficient. Another reason, of course, is the lack of accessibility or know-how or knowledge or just the cost of running your own nodes. Most people couldn't afford 32 ETH to run their own validating and constructing node. So the answer to decentralization could be along these lines. When Vitalik, in October this year, presented his vision of Ethereum in 10 years' time. He said, you can run it on a phone. You hash it, you do a couple of elliptical curve equations, and that's it. You know, the block is valid. It's just incredibly sleek and seamless, to the point where, like, literally, a phone could run it. And he said, basically, this is what the final goal for protocol is, to be able to run on a mobile phone. And I tend to agree with him. But what I don't agree is that it'll take 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Minima. We're doing it already. Minima has created a light 
ultra compact blockchain protocol layer one that runs in full on your mobile phone, where every user is a full validating and constructing node runner. The blockchain remains small, and everybody does the same amount of work on their phone, on their device, on a laptop, in a car. So there's no hierarchy. Everyone is equal. There's no miners, there's no validators, and there's no um, more powerful node than the next. We've truly reached a point where everybody can be equal players on a totally decentralized and distributed blockchain ne network. And the next step for us, not in 10 years, but in one to two years, is system on a chip, where we can run this protocol on IoT on any device that has a pulse. So how do we achieve a complete decentralized layer one? As I mentioned, we have now got a layer one blockchain protocol that is full constructing and validating node. And the key for us is to collaborate rather than compete. So instead of miners being paid mining rewards, we all do a tiny amount of work on our device. We all do the same amount of work. We all do the same. We run the same code. And that adds up to the immense amount of CPU collectively. And importantly, the way we keep the blockchain small is we store just the information that's relative to our own private data. And collectively, it adds up to the entire ledger. But we only need to make sure that we protect the data that's relevant for us. And <clears throat> this isn't just a dream. We currently have over 250,000 people running our nodes daily. We have 800,000 users. We have more constructing and validating node than every other cryptocurrency combined. And we are running in 187 countries. We truly are the most decentralized and distributed network. You may not have heard of Minima yet, but soon you will, as we go to mainnet launch in February. And with it, we will bring the promise of the most decentralized and distributed network. We will go to market with a million nodes. And at that point, there's no amount of um, bot farms, of servers, of automated hashing that can possibly undermine and usurp the amount of hashes that will naturally take place among this peer-to-peer -peer network. So <clears throat> we have created a, um, essentially the dream that was postulated 14 years ago with Satoshi and his amazing friends. And we have now created a censorship-resistant blockchain where everyone is equal. Our first and major um, adoption strategy, of course, is with people. And the key here is that you'll be self-sovereign. You'll be in charge of your own data, your own coins, your own keys. And everything that you need that is precious to you will be stored on your own phone with backup keys, of course. But ultimately, no one is able to, to um, see that data and to usurp what's yours. But as we move forward, we're going to move into these projects that we're running with global companies, such as in the automotive space, where we're using Minima for vehicle communication, where you can have value transfer over this network of connected devices for secure private messaging and transfer of, inf of value and information. And of course, our final go-to-market strategy is the internet of everything, when Minima will be running seamlessly in the background of all connected devices, guaranteeing you have the authentication of the data, secure value, and secure messaging, where we can truly forget about the underlying tech and get on with building the new revolution of a secure, trusted, and true Web3 um, future. So I thank you very much for your time. My name is Adam Feiler. Uh, head of Partnerships, please contact me at Minima.global. And I would like anyone who's interested to download Minima. Um, we are currently av available on Google Play Store. Um, it, it costs nothing, and uh, you'll forever be a part of this global mesh of uh, active users, where we are basically bringing the true promise of a decentralized censorship-resistant blockchain to the world. Thank you.